Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, so this is something new and different um, because it's based on something that just really uh, is new. Um, this building your own GPT was just announced, uh, I think, the week before last. Uh, and so, of course, it caught my attention. And so I've been able to spend over the last week or so, spend some time playing around with it. But let me make it clear. I am not like an AI expert. If you're expecting to attend this webinar and find someone who's an ex-Google employee who is head of the AI development team or something like that, no, there, we're all just chickens here in this coop. Uh, but presumably we all have interest in process improvement and uh, we all have interest in uh, the developments in, in AI. Uh, but that's about it. So I think we're more or less all of us here on the same playing field. If we look at the poll, uh, let me just review that. It looked like a 41% or 43% have never used ChatGPT or Cloud AI. So you have that to look forward to. Now 46%, so almost half. You have, have that to uh, look forward to. Um, there's a free version or there's a paid version, which is not very expensive. Uh, so this is going to be exciting, I think, for you. Some of you have played with it a little bit, it's 38%, and then 14% uh, of you said a lot, meaning you know, used it you know, probably quite a few hours or maybe even every day. Okay, so let's, let's get into it and I'll just introduce the, the subject here. What are we gonna talk about in this webinar? Well, uh, we just wanna share the latest developments because this is all very hot off the press, this ability to create your own kind of custom GPTs. So uh, we want to share a little bit about what I've learned uh, in that space. Uh, then the next question, logical question is, well, what would this be good for? So we'll explore that in this webinar. What would we use this for? Uh, specifically focused on lean, you know, the world of process improvement, uh, lean, lean manufacturing, Toyota production system, continuous improvement, Six Sigma, you know, that whole domain. What, what could we use a, a, a lean GPT or a custom GPT for? And then we're going to get into how to how to build it yourself. Uh, it's not hard, so uh, we'll walk through the steps. That and we'll show you a live example, or almost live. I recorded it on a video. I didn't want to take the chances of things, you know, blowing up. So I recorded myself creating a GPT. We'll look at that. And then we have uh, another demo of the actual application. So how you would use this custom GPT and customize some specific functions for it. And then we'll do some brainstorming at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar of different applications that we might uh, want to develop for our own kind of like our private guru or private sensei uh, for specific elements or aspects of lean manufacturing, right? And I put a note down here for me, GPT. What does that mean? Well, I can't tell you. I still can't tell you exactly what it means, but I know it stands for generative generative pre-trained transformers. I don't know if that helps you or not, but you can Google it yourself and find out more about what actually that, that means. But that's a term. Now, in terms of using AI for lean, uh, there's a website that I've mentioned in previous webinars, if some of you attended them, called uh, there's an AI for that.com. And uh, you can put in some terms, search terms, keywords, and it'll, it'll identify uh, different AI apps that are already out there and published. Not using this custom GPT uh, a tool that's now available to us, but just things that people have developed using the API with ChatGPT or other, other AIs that are out there. And so at present, this was as of yesterday, there were 30 AI apps already out there for different aspects of Lean uh, you know, that, that other people had developed. Now, the, the bad news for a lot of these people developing these kind of apps is that, you know, unless you have something that's very unique and very, you know, value adding that people can't just do on your own. Well, with what I'm going to share with you today, uh, a lot of these apps you can just do yourself. So uh, I think a lot of these, there are something like 9,000 of them out there in this database are gonna go by the wayside because they really won't, they're not adding enough value to what you can just do on your own, you know, for free and pretty easily. So that's where that's the current state as of a few weeks ago. Now, 
there was an announcement from OpenAI, which is the parent company of ChatGPT and Dolly and uh, some of these other AI tools, the uh, ChatGPT AI API. And what they announced was the ability for you and me to create our own custom or private uh, GPTs or apps. You know, they, they use the term GPT uh, for these kind of tools. And there are people, I guess, that are doing this full time. It's their full time job to stay on top of all these developments with AI, which are quite mind blowing and dizzying, you know, change of, 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 of or pace of change. And so I did a, a YouTube search and there are already like literally dozens of YouTube videos showing you how to do this. So I'm going to give you an example, but <laughs> there's no lack of information and people willing to help you on YouTube uh, in creating your own GPT. So my focus is going to be more on the lean, you know, how do you, how do we use this for lean applications, which you won't find on YouTube, but if you want to know how to just build your own GPT, uh, there are literally dozens of YouTube videos that will walk you through the steps. So, and, and, and these people, these videos just came up out of nowhere because remember, this is only two weeks ago that this, uh, this was announced. And uh, so it's quite mind blowing. So uh, that came out uh, a few weeks ago. And then <laughs> yesterday, or I think Wednesday, uh, Microsoft had a, a conference and they introduced this thing they call they're calling the Microsoft Copilot Studio, and they're basically announcing the same thing. So introducing this was taken from their announcement, introducing Microsoft Copilot Studio following OpenAI's announcement of customizable GPT platform. That's what we're, we'll be talking about. Microsoft now launches Copilot Studio, the no-code solution allowing businesses to create custom copilots or integrate custom chat GPT AI chatbots. So it sounds sounds like the same thing, doesn't it? But somehow hosted uh, within the uh, within the Microsoft uh, world, and you know Microsoft is also maybe it's already released. I'm not sure. I think you have to have a, like a commercial license, which I don't have. But uh, they've already announced uh, a Copilot for the Office Suite. So apparently, um, and some of you can add in the chats if you've actually seen this. I won't be able to, by the way, I won't be able to focus on the chat as much as I might like. But if you've seen this, uh, you might make a comment here. Adding uh, basically Copilot uh, or AI capabilities to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, you know, the whole Microsoft Office suite. Um, so that's interesting in itself. As I said, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that's available to uh, you know non-commercial licenses right now. Although I, I would expect it would be. So this is all you know exciting stuff and picking up. And Microsoft is now in the game. Now, when we're talking about a lean tool like we're going to be looking at here, uh, and we called it the Lean Sensei, the one I created. Uh, where does it fit in this world of AI? Well, we've got this whole issue of something called machine learning. Uh, so that's using AI to look at data and, um, you know, and, and analyze it and come up with all kinds of uh, interesting observations and uses. For example, it can look, machine learning can look at output from a machine vibration or sound and detect when that sound changes and, and predict failures on, on equipment, for example. So machine learning is one interesting aspect of AI. Uh, the other one is NLP, natural language processing, and that's really the one that ChatGPT is involved in. Uh, and that's where we're, we're taking a lot of input from the internet, from books, from all kinds of sources, and analyzing that. And, and that's really what we're dealing with when we're working with ChatGPT. And I'm, I'm just mentioning this because... Uh, <laughs> While this is amazing, if you if you haven't used ChatGPT yet, you 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 probably are going to be amazed at it, what seems to be it seems to be, um, you know, human like intelligence uh, coming back with insights and answers and dialogue and discussion, but uh, it's not quite there yet because while it seems to be adept at language 
and certain aspects of language and communication, it's not that strong in other areas. And let me show you what I mean. You might, uh, I did it in the slide, but there's a person named Yegen Choi, and Bill Gates referred to her the other day in, in his podcast. Uh, she's, a, I guess, a former Microsoft employee who now is working in the domain of trying to get AI to be more human and with ethics and with what she calls common sense. Because right now, uh, uh, AI or chat GPT does not, it's lacking common sense. You won't always notice this, uh, depending on what you're asking it, the kind of the level of your discussion. But if you ask it certain questions, you could be surprised. <clears throat> and let me show you what I mean here. This was uh, from uh, from Miss Miss Choi's presentation, an example. So here's an example, and I did this myself yesterday. So this is hot off the press. This is not some old version of ChatGPT. This is the the current version, the uh, ChatGPT four, where I asked, and you can see it here. It takes five hours to dry five articles of clothing in the sun. How long would it take to dry 30 articles of clothing? And so it does some analysis for us. Well, five hours to dry five, so that's an hour each. So it would take 30 hours. Well, this is clearly not correct. And I think even an eight-year-old could tell you that's not right. But, you know, very confidently it, it came up with this, with this wrong answer. So lacking some kind of common sense about maybe the physical world or how things actually work. Here's another example. I have a 12-gallon jug and a 6-gallon jug. How can I measure out exactly 6 gallons of water? Well, here's the step-by-step the, the -step instruction from ChatGPT. Okay, here are the steps. Fill the 12-gallon jug, pour the water from the 12-gallon jug into the 6-gallon six, uh, six jug. Uh, empty out the, uh, there will now be 6 gallons remaining, then empty out the 6-gallon jug and then pour. Okay, I don't have to read this all to you. Clearly, it seems to come up with the right answer, but clearly not anything that, again, like an eight-year-old would, would be able to figure this out. So then I challenged ChatGPT on this. I said, well, why can't I just fill up the six-gallon six gallon jug and then just stop? And then ChatGPT says, oh, you're right. Hey, there's a simpler way to do this. You just fill the six-gallon jug. That's it. Since you have a jug that's exactly six gallons, wow. And then it says, wow, you really caught me there. You caught my oversight. Good catch. You know, a lot of praise for the profound insight that, a, that an eight-year-old could have, could have uh, told you. So I'm just pointing this out to you just to highlight the fact that we can't necessarily trust all this information we're getting back from ChatGPT, at least not yet, because it's fairly easy to, to um, confuse it with what should for most people be fairly common sense kinds of things, kinds of questions, all right? But uh, that said, you know, it's pretty amazing <laughs> what it will do. So I don't want to take away from its power. So the next question uh, that I had, uh, maybe you have too, is, well, what is this good for? How is this different from just using ChatGPT? If we create this custom, quote unquote, custom uh, tool, custom GPT, then uh, how, how is this any different? Why don't I just use ChatGPT directly? So I asked that question to my lean sensei, and uh, he or she or it came back with this answer. It says, I'm a specialized version of ChatGPT tailored specifically to offer expert guidance in mixed model manufacturing. Now, mixed model manufacturing is our uh, wheelhouse. Leonardo Group America is my company. That's kind of our, our niche in, in the world of lean. So mixed model manufacturing, my focus is on providing detailed advice and insights related to line design, delivery routes, inventory, Kanban quantities, machine person integration. So, okay, all of that is good. And so here are some specific points, specialized knowledge base. So it has a specialized knowledge base because I fed to the Lean Sensei, and I'll show, show this to you uh, shortly, uh, specific documents that we had related to our domain. Uh, in particular, we have two books. We have The Complete Guide to Mixed Model Line Design, and we have a book called Material Flow. So these are detailed uh, discussions of those two domains, two subjects, and I was able to upload those to, uh, to our Lean Sensei. And then there were some other documents. We teach a class, a public class at Toyota called Mixed Model Line Design and Mixed Model Material Flow, surprisingly enough. And uh, I, so I took some of that content 
and the scripts, the instructor notes for those classes and gave, gave uh, our Lean Sensei access to those. So, uh, so basically our Lean Sensei is gonna be using the, that information as a primary source, not the only source because it still has access to the rest of the, you know, the incredible world universe of, of data available in ChatGPT, but it's gonna use our information as the primary source. And that's what it says here. And then uh, the advice that uh, the Lean Sensei is going to give is tailored uh, as if he or she or it was a Lean uh, mentor or, or consultant or, or teacher. And it's going to provide specific guidance to mixed model manufacturing. So that was a couple issues. And then uh, what else? Contextual understanding. I'm more adept at understanding and responding to queries within this domain because I'm customized, right? I'm specialized. So I'm gonna give you more specific feedback than ChatGPT would generally. Friendly and approachable tone, okay, that's nice. Uh, I think ChatGPT could do that as well. And then resource-based responses, this is what I've been saying. It's gonna rely on the data that we've, we've provided uh, to, the, to it or him or she. So in essence, while regular ChatGPT provides a broad range of information, I'm designed to be an expert in mixed model manufacturing specifically, providing targeted in-depth assistance. So all that sounds good, right? Sounds, it sounds like a reasonable thing that we would wanna have. Now, the next question is, uh, is this data secure? So if I'm sharing our books, or maybe if you're a company, you're sharing company specific information, uh, is this secure or what's gonna happen? And I think the answer we get back, this is from ChatGPT generally, is, well, yeah, kind of, sort of, is the measures I get, uh, that there are some rules in place. We have some policies in place to maintain security. But, and I put this in red myself, uh, if the information is highly sensitive or confidential, it's generally advisable to avoid sharing it on any online platform, including this one. So that's kind of like their... Uh, Disclaimer, you know, if you um, if you have an investment account with uh, Schwab or 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 if you have a, an investment counselor that you work with, um, typically they will say, hey, uh, past performance is not indicative of future results. And, um, you know, in other words, don't don't rely on what's happened in the past necessarily. So don't rely on our policy of privacy necessarily if you have confidential data. So that's good advice. So our books are not confidential information since you can buy them in a bookstore. Anyone can get access to them. So I'm not worried about that. But if you do have specific information, uh, you, you want to be cautious, right? In terms of sharing it with the Lean Sensei. Okay, now here comes the, the demo. What I'm gonna do here is a couple things. If I can pull this off, I'm going to change the uh, design so you can see this better. I'm going to change the design of the uh, interface here. We're using a tool called Webinar Jam, and I'm going to select this one so you can see the screen a little bit better, and I'm going to play a video. Now, the reason I recorded it was I just wanted to avoid surprises, quote, unquote, uh, in trying to do a live demo. Uh, so I'm going to uh, select the video, and I'm going to play it. And what you're going to see here is a tour or a creation of a chat GPT uh, that I did myself. And this is my own voice narrating it. So I'll just be watching it al along with you while, while we go through this process. So here we go. And play the video. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and explore uh, how you would create a GPT by by actually creating a, a simple one. And then I'll share with you what I did with the Lean Sensei, the uh, GPT that I created earlier this week. So here we go. First, uh, I have a paid account with Open with uh, OpenAI, with ChatGPT. I think it's $20 a month. Uh, and you would need that, I believe, to get access to these features. So I'm gonna select Explore over on the left side. It's gonna come up with um, either GPTs you've already, I've already created, uh, recently used ones, and then a whole list of kind of standard GPTs that probably were created by OpenAI uh, that kind of come with it. So I'm gonna start with just create a GPT. We're gonna start from scratch. And 
You'll notice up here at the top there's create and then there's configure. The difference between those two is create would be a, a good place to start if you're trying to figure this out, try different things, and kind of go through a kind of a chat process where you can go back and forth and refine what you want it to do. Configure, and we'll look at it, look at configure in a minute, uh, is when you kind of know what you want to do and you don't want to go through this chat process. You just want to enter the title and what it's going to do in the instructions and, and maybe some content, etc. directly. So you can go back and forth, but usually we would start with create. So let's create one. Let's just say that we want a specialist Let's keep it in the realm of lean. We want a specialist in Obeya, Obeya rooms. So um, what would you like to make? Um, uh, I would like to make a uh, GPT specialist in the subject of Obeya rooms. The uh, GPT is a world-class expert in this subject. Let's just start with that and see what happens. So GPT Builder says it's updating. Okay, and it comes back and says, great choice. Thank you very much. Now let's give this GPT a, a chat an, a, a name. How about Obey Expert? Does that name work for you? Or do you have another name in mind? We'll say, I'll say yes, great. And then it's going to go to the next step and create a little profile picture, like a little logo. Okay, and here's the profile picture for Obeya Expert. It represents a modern, efficient Obeya room. Wow, cool. Do you like this image or would you like to make any changes? Well, it's pretty detailed. Kind of hard to see if it's small, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. So I'm just going to say we'll, we'll keep it. Keep it. All right. Great. Now let's refine the concept. Let's focus on the role and goal. We've established as an expert on Obeya rooms. Could you tell me more about the specific types of questions or topics? Um, so design, implementation, or something else. So I'm going to say um, focus is on an implementation roadmap to create an Obeya room and the process and disciplines to actually use and obey a room. Okay, great. We're making good progress. Now let's consider how Obey Expert should clarify things. When it encounters a question or topic that is unclear or lacks specific details, should it ask for more information or should it use its expertise to fill in the gaps? and provide a general answer. Um, it should ask for more information and not give generalized general answers. Okay? The, let's say, the conversation style should be friendly, but not flippant. How about that? Okay. So uh, you'll notice over on the right side, it's given us a preview or a test, test bed to try things out, where we can post questions to it. But I think before we do that, there's some things we want to do. We want to actually add some more content, um, some actual documents. So I'm going to go over here to configure, and there's a, there's a button here to actually train this GPT in specific uh, knowledge related to Obeas. And it just so happens I have a book, so I'm going to upload that book. Uh, let's see, I think I have it in my download folder. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Obeya. There, Obeya strategy, Obeya book. All right, so we're going to open this up and it's going to load it in. So you can see I'm over here on the configure side and 
much of what I entered as in the chat uh, is now moved over here where we can edit it, change it, change the, uh, the name, uh, the description. We can ask for a, a different logo and we can add documents that it's primarily going to use in order to respond to questions. There are also some capabilities that we can turn on and off, code interpreter, the image generation functionality, and web browsing. So uh, we may not need code, for example, in this one, so we can turn that off. And there we go. So when we're ready to actually use this, once we've tested it, for example, um, let me just type in a sample question. Um, what is an obey a room question mark Let's see what it comes up with an obey a room is a large room concept that merges systems thinking and leadership sounds good originally developed by toyota in the 1990s see together think together try together all that's good so pretty good pretty good little summary but we can really drill down and ask all kinds of detailed questions and ask it to come up with an imp implementation plan all kinds of things so the more specific information you upload here in the form of specific documents, text, etc., then the more uh, customized it's going to be. And when you're all done, you can just click on save. You can save it for people with a link. Now, here's the thing. The people with a link still have to have a, um, an account with uh, OpenAI, I do believe. So it's not open to the public exactly. And when they say public here, it means in the GPT store. <laughs> So let's just leave it at only me for the time being and say confirm. And then we'll go back. Now, before I get out of here, I just wanted to share with you uh, the Lean Sensei and just show you what we've done with that. So here's Lean Sensei, and I want to edit it, and I want to configure it. And uh, this is an image I created outside of this functionality, and I just uploaded it and asked it to use it, and it, it did that. And then I've uploaded some documents to my Lean Sensei uh, GPT. Uh, I've uploaded our two books. We have a book called Material Flow uh, and another one, The Complete Guide to Mixed Model Line Design. And then I've uploaded some basic content from the courses that we teach at Toyota, day one, day two, day three, in uh, line design, and uh, a few other... Um, a few other files. Now I could keep going here, but we have quite a you know quite a good collection here of specific documents related specifically to mixed model manufacturing, which is our kind of our wheelhouse. And I've I've um, started also to add some very specific prompts here, but you know specific buttons you can click to to do various things: test my knowledge, analyze demand. So uh, I'm going to come back to here in a separate video and. Uh, and we'll explore some of these things that I've actually created that make these GPTs a little bit more um, sophisticated and useful.
So let's view the function of the Lean Sensei with a couple of the uh, uh, tools that I've created here. One is called Test My Knowledge. And what this does is a prompt for a, a topic related to mixed model manufacturing and then quiz the uh, user uh, in a variety of different formats on that particular topic. Uh, Analyze Demand is the opportunity to upload an Excel file and then do some analysis uh, with that file uh, on the demand portion of the data and provide some feedback. So let's try this uh, first one, test my knowledge, and see what happens. Great, let's begin the test by knowledge quiz, provide a topic within mixed model manufacturing, and I'll prepare questions related to it. Okay. So let's uh, let's not be too challenging here for me. Let's uh, let's say we want to be quizzed on the topic of tack time. See what happens. So Lean Sensei is going to think a little bit and come up with some questions. Says excellent choice, cr crucial concept. Yes. In the context of lean manufacturing, what does tack time represent? The total time taken to complete one cycle the rate at which products need to be completed, the average time a worker spends, the maximum time allowed. Well, I'm going to say probably B is uh, the best choice there. The rate at which products need to be completed to meet demand. Correct. All right. I made it. Phew. I was nervous there for a minute. Tack time represents the rate at which products need to be completed. Let's move to a true-false question. All right. Tack time can vary significantly from day to day within the same production facility depending on daily customer orders. Is this true or false? This is false. Tack time does not change significantly from day to day. That's right. Okay, good. I'm doing pretty well, right? So far, <clears throat> and it gives a little explanation of each of the questions. Short essay question. Explain how tack time is calculated and discuss its importance in balancing the production line. So uh, this is where we can actually type in some text. And this is different from a lot of online quizzes, which are typically multiple choice or, or true-false. But here we can actually do a, like a short essay. So I'm going to say the formula is uh, available work time divided by uh, demand. The tack time can is used as a guide to allocate work content to the various work stations in a sequential assembly line. Short and sweet. Let's see how, how it responds to that answer. It's on point. OK. okay. And it's going to add a little add more, more detail here to, to that uh, uh, question. Uh, Work time by customer. Then formula ensures that production is closely aligned with what customers actually need, preventing overproduction and underproduction. Smooth transition. Great job on answering these questions. Would you like to continue with more questions, or is there another way I can assist you with mixed model? I'm just going to say all for now. Thank Thank you. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. All very polite, right? right. Uh, I learned that it's good to be polite with these AIs. You never know when one day they'll be our overlords. So uh, be polite and be stay in their good graces. So <laughs> that's that. Back to our live session. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I uh, I got a message from. Uh, from Webinar Jam saying, hey, you should turn off your microphone while you're playing a video in case you don't have additional noise coming through. So I did that, and I forgot to turn it back on, of course. Uh, so I'm assuming you can hear me now. Uh, so what I'd said, actually, was that uh, this test your knowledge could be great just to test your own knowledge, but also if you have a company and you want to make sure that your team is, is you know, uh, retaining what they're learning and up to a certain level of understanding and knowledge, you could just ask uh, the Lean Sensei to test them individually. And the cool thing is this. Every person would get tested with a unique set of questions. Uh, and you can say, uh, you know, give each person 10 questions or 100 
And there must be some limit somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, but the lean sensei would, you know, give them a pretty profound um, exam. Uh, now, the only weakness with that right now is that once the exam is given, you can't really um, automatically with a click, you know, send an email with the results. You would have to copy the, the the exam into a Word document or something like that, I think, to to get it out. There might be some other way of doing it. I, I couldn't find it. So I actually I asked ChatGPT, how, how would I save the results of the exam? And that's what they said. You have to copy it and save it to a file. But I think this could be very cool in terms of, uh, you know, testing your team uh, in, a, in a kind of a non-threatening way and have something that's very unique for every, every student. Uh, so and you could also ask, by the way, ask uh, ChatGPT to give you a, a, a score right for the, the entire exam. You know, how did they do? So uh, so with that, let's go back to the uh, the slides. Uh, the weakness here is I think it's kind of kicked me out. Oh, no, we're back to where we were. That's good. So I'm going to start. There we are. That's where we left off. Uh, and let's continue on. Now, the super cool thing. Uh, let me let me change the settings here, too, since you don't need. The detail. Uh, let me. There we go. You can see me a little bit better. You can see me waving my hands around a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> what could be super cool with this, uh, and it's kind of beyond my pay grade, beyond my level of ex expertise right now, is creating truly custom actions using third-party APIs. So what that means for you non-programmers is that you can actually reach out to other applications as long as they have this API capability and do things outside of the chat GPT and actually return information from these outside applications. So, uh, you know, within the world of say travel, you could actually have your chat GPT go out to a travel site and pull, uh, you know, flight schedules for airlines or pricing, that kind of thing. So, um, if you have that expertise or want to achieve that level of expertise, this gets you into the realm of having something that's really unique. And these are the kind of things you can actually charge money for. Uh, it, until you get into this world, you can, you're basically still doing things that someone else could do pretty easily. But uh, if you can build these uh, GPTs with uh, APIs going out to other applications in the world, then you really uh, have the potential for coming up with something that's truly unique and, and, and maybe amazing beyond my skill level right now, but I just wanted to point that out to you. Now, we already talked about how uh, GPT lacks some common sense, and I wanted to share with you my experience a little bit with numeric data as opposed to text. Uh, it seems to me that uh, GPT, chat GPT, or these custom GPTs are a little bit unstable uh, when it comes to dealing with numbers. I've done quite a bit of experimentation with loading Excel files and trying to get it to interpret the data. And unless that data is very, very well structured, then it, it and it wouldn't be surprising that it would have trouble with that. But uh, I'm getting you know, I get very, um, say, uns, uh, uncons inconsistent results by using ChatGPT uh, to do numbers. And the other troubling thing is uh, GPT will make very confident claims that are just not true exactly. For example, if you ask it, can you read Excel files? Uh, GPT will typically say, oh yes, no problem. Just upload the file. Uh, but if you push <laughs> a little bit harder, uh, you'll find that it'll come back with, well, you know, I can't really interpret this uh, only in a very general sense. So it's kind of uh, mixed results uh, to say the least. Now here's something that's really weird. If you push GPT, like chat GPT or, or your private GPT, emotionally, uh, you tend to get better results. Why is that? I have no idea. But if you phrase, if you, if it comes back and says, for example, I can't read this spreadsheet, but you say, oh, I'm so sad. I'm so disappointed. I'm devastated. Or, uh, you're great. You're the world class expert. You can do it. I know you can do it. I have strong confidence in you. Somehow, <laughs> somehow it will it will do it and come back with with the results you're looking for. Why is that happening? I don't know. 
but it, it's it's kind of a weird thing. So keep that in mind in your bag of tricks in terms of getting the results you want out of uh, out of ChatGPT. So uh, when we're dealing with numbers, what my solution these days is to just have ChatGPT or GPT write code, uh, you know, code code that hopefully you can interpret, you know, and use. So in my case, VBA is more accessible to me than uh, Python. I can kind of read Python, but VBA is I'm much more comfortable with that. So I've been asking GPT to write macros, basically. If, if my data is in Excel, write macros to help with the numeric processing, because that way I can check the code and verify that it's doing what I want it to do. Otherwise, I'm kind of asking GPT to do something to do some numeric processing in a black box, and I can't I can't really check it. So therefore, I don't trust it. So uh, my recommendation to you all is if you're dealing with numerical processing, at least right now at the current state of maturity is have it write the code. It's pretty good at that. Not perfect, but pretty good. And then um, use that code to do the actual processing. But hopefully this will improve over time. But that's where we are right now. Okay. So uh, that said, uh, I just wanted to share with you verbally uh, kind of a pre-announce the next webinar I'm going to do. We have a, a spreadsheet, a, a standard format spreadsheet that we use when we do line designs, like designing a value stream that includes some documentation on the entities or the products going through this uh, line and the description and the volumes to, to be used for design and the processing times and the processes are listed across the top. And then we do some calculations that if you're a lean person, you're familiar with already. Tack time, we talked about that already. And how many people do I need? How many machines do I need? Uh, how many workstations do I need in this design? And then in the past, we would take that data, that static data, and we would create a layout all, all manually from that point forward. Right? We would create a, a layout, try to optimize it, experiment with different uh, layouts, do cutouts, uh, and then eventually end up with a, a CAD-based physical layout and so on and so forth. So what I want to accomplish here uh, is to be able to take our basic core data that you would have to develop on your own, right, manually, and then push a single button. This is my vision anyway. Push a button and be able to do all the calculations, the tack time, volume, resources, all that stuff. Do it correctly and instantly, basically. And then take that data and create a simulation model a discrete event simulation model of that line. Uh, I think I know how to do it. I just haven't finished it yet. So the next webinar is going to be the finished product, uh, I expect, where with one click, based on that input data, you can do the calculations, create a flow chart, a graphical flow chart, and create a discrete event simulation model. Now, the simulation software we use is our own. It's the Lean Design Simulator included in our Lean Design Studio. But just about any commercial simulation software probably has some way of accepting an external file. I know that Pro Model does. I'm not sure about the others, but I'm pretty sure they, they, they would. And so if you have some other simulation modeling software you use, uh, you could probably come up with your own, something similar to what I'll be doing with our own software, right, and feed it the data. or And at least get close to a, finished simulation model. So uh, we'll be sending you the information on, on this next webinar, but that should be exciting. And that puts a line in the sand for me to finish it. But I'm more than halfway finished with having it, getting it to run. All the calculations are now running right now. All the inputs to the simulation model, at least there are six of them, at least uh, two of them are completed. So I, I, I really don't, uh, I'm not worried about being able to get this done, but that should be a very cool thing. So final observations uh, that I have for this. And then uh, we have some time uh, if you have some questions or want to chat. I noticed there were a few comments there we can get to. But uh, basically, things are evolving at a dizzying pace. So imagine this. Two weeks ago, they announced this uh, private you know, chat functionality. And then three day, two days ago, Microsoft announced the same thing. So just in this one piece of AI, Things are moving right along. There are people that are, I, I think it must <clears throat> it must be their full-time job. They're trying to keep on top of this, and they release YouTube videos 
uh, periodically. I mean, like every day, every day or two. I mean, what kind of what kind of uh, pace of change is there other than AI, where the changes are happening so fast that every few days there are some new announcements? It seems like so uh, so things are happening quickly. Uh, but in terms of using it, uh, as I've tried to share with you in this video, you need to uh, be amazed, trust, but verify, right? Verify the results. In other words, accept at face value what you're getting back from this because, again, still today, ChatGPT or these AI large language model tools lack common sense and they lack some numerical sophistication. This is what I've seen. So if you're dealing with numbers, and, and we are, uh, the current state of the art, in my opinion, is to use GPT to help with some coding. And this is still a major help because for the coding I'm doing for our one-click simulation model creation, if I had to do that myself, I might be able to do it, but it would take me weeks. And I'm doing this in hours. Uh, all The role I'm taking is to review and provide corrections I don't have to actually write the, the, the basic code itself. I'm just doing the debugging and, and the fine tuning. So it's a tremendous help. The other thing is there's so many aspects of this AI world that you could get lost in. So you need to pick a niche. Uh, if you're a lean specialist, kind of pick that one, right? And, and work on that because the entire landscape is overwhelming. There's so many areas you could just get, spend the rest of your life in, like just uh, the graphics, right? Visual. Uh, generation, image generation by itself is just amazing, huge world unto itself. And then the audio is getting amazing as well, like writing music and, you know, that whole world, you could spend a lot of time there. So my recommendation to you, having watched this webinar, is uh, start, you know, start doing some experimentation with creating your own GPTs. And uh, if you're relatively new to it, uh, this would be a good good learning experience. Um, and if you're more evolved, have more experience, this could be a way of really developing some good tools right, to be used in your company or in your practice. OK, so with that, here, here are some uh, some quick announcements. Here's the next webinar. Uh, I don't have a, uh, a registration link set up yet, so I will uh, send out email to all of you watching this um, with a, a link if you want to attend that next one. Probably next week's a little short, right, for Americans. We have our Thanksgiving typically a two-day holiday, Thursday and Friday. So um, next week's not good, but the week after that, we'll do this, uh, this webinar talking about the one-click, build models with one-click. Uh, next announcement, uh, we, we, we were at Toyota. We taught our Toyota workshop, the last one of, of this year, uh, week before last, and uh, we have the dates for 2024. So uh, again, we'll in the email I'll send to all of you, we'll put in a link if you want to find out more about it. But there are basically two subjects, line design and material flow. This is at the Toyota factory in Columbus, Indiana. Uh, and it's us, Leonardo Group, teaching this class, but also factory tours, Q&A sessions with the Toyota folks. I mean, it's just a great experience, three days. So here are the dates, February 20th, April, April 30th, August 6th, and November 12th. All right, so more on that. Uh, our Lean Design Studio, I've mentioned that a few times. This is our our website, basically, for all things related to mixed model manufacturing. And I've added a section for AI. So all this work that we're doing on, on AI, creating these chats, et cetera, I'll be uh, posting to this section of the Lean Design Studio uh, with tool, it's called Tools and AI, I think. Um, so, um, that's an exciting new aspect of the uh, Lean Design Studio, and I think it'll be more important as, as we go forward as well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's the end of the, the webinar portion, but let me look at the uh, chat and see if there are any questions. Um, okay, Anastasia, sorry you missed a great part. Uh, it'll be recorded, right? So all of you will get a recording uh, link. So if you want to uh, watch it again, uh, you can do that if you miss part of it. Now, th there was a question from Carlos. To, for creating Lean Sensei or something like that, uh, we need to pay for a subscription. I believe that is true. So you need to have a um, ChatGPT Plus account, and that is $20 uh, 
uh, a month, which I think is pretty reasonable, right? It's not hugely expensive. But yes, you do have to have a an account. All right. So uh, let's see if there's anything else here. How can we test the model? Uh, can you expand on that? Which model are we talking about? Talking about the 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 lean sensei type model. Uh, there is a test bed, right, or test mode where you can kick the tires and test the model that you've just created before you make it available. Uh, that's certainly a possibility if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, Anastasia, I just said that we have a, um, there'll be a recording. Uh, you'll get it in about two or three hours. You've got an email with a recording and you'll be able to um, watch the parts that you missed. All right. Anything else you want to uh, ask or share? Anyone else uh, in the group actually tried this yet? Tried creating a, uh, you know, like the private GPT? GPT is the term they're using for this these apps. I guess they're trying to get that to stick. Oh, testing the Lean Sensei. Well, you wouldn't have access. Lean Sensei is my, my uh, model, right? So... If you uh, if you have an account, uh, I can give you access to it by giving you the link, uh, right? Giving you the link, and then you could try it out for yourself. Uh, I tried uh, sharing it with people that didn't have an account, and uh, I was running into problems with that. So if you want to uh, actually, you know, try out the Lean Sensei model, just let me know, and I can. Uh, I can provide you with the link and that'll give you access to it. I think that's all we can do right now. All right. Have I deployed? Uh, I deployed to myself. Uh, in other words, I, the, the Lean Sensei, I saved it for my own use right now. Uh, but I'm suggesting that you can create your own, right? So any of you that would like to try the Lean Sensei, you send me a, a, an email, a private email, and... Uh, uh, I'm assuming that you have an account and I'll make sure you get a link to, um, you know, to, to try out the Lean Sensei, the one, the one I just showed you. All right. Okay. Well, super. Thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your feedback. Um, yeah. Banks. So Lisa, banks, uh, pharma, I mean, all kinds of opportunities, uh, not at all limited to lean manufacturing. That was just our domain, so that's the example I was using, but all kinds of opportunities. For example, one I thought of is, have you ever, with banks, because I've been dealing with this lately, uh, when you ask, when customers in a bank, this is for you, Lisa, when customers in a bank ask uh, to change accounts, or maybe they're, they're, uh, they have a relative that's died, and they have to you know, assume ownership of the account, typically there are forms to fill out, correct? And this is something that, that I've been dealing with, with my family. And some of these forms are complex. So could you create a GPT to help people fill out the forms correctly without having to be on the phone with them uh, as much? Maybe, maybe sometimes. But it would just walk them through how to fill out the form, right, step by step. That could be extremely useful and save you guys, save the bank a lot of time. Because I've spent a lot of time on the phone uh, you know, with customer support, trying to get them to explain to me how to fill this out correctly, because it's confusing. If you've, you're doing it for the first time, it's confusing. So um, world of opportunities, to, you know, in other industries. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, maybe I'll, I'll leave you. And again, you'll get a, an email uh, with uh, that will send you with a link to the next webinar, if that's something of interest to you. Okay, so so long, folks. See you next time. Bye now.